Good evening and welcome to the Scientology Money Project on YouTube with your host, Agent Augustine, SPTV Network. Got an interesting show tonight. And um, what led to this is I was uh, uh, asked to uh, look into some Scientology business and I was going through background. And uh, look, let me lay it out to you this way. Um, let me get to my comments. Uh, I have an interesting comment. We have we have one of our regulars, of course, Unstable Datum, who is unstable uh, in every way. That's why, hence Unstable Datum. And uh, he says, speaking of businesses, <laughs> Jeffrey, you need to get on, on the Unstable Datum crypto IPO. Wow, that's exciting. I'm also selling uh, 10X creatine suppository distributorships and offering fake SEO consulting. You know, it's almost like life imitates art or, or art imitates life. We're going to get into some of that because you're predicting where I'm headed with this. Um, as far as your uh, unstable datum, crypto IPO, uh, yeah, I'm count me in on that, uh, bro. I'm prepared to offer you uh, a special uh, one millionth percent undivided interest in a flathead screwdriver because I'm sure that's equal to the value of your crypto one one millionth now you know I'll go one one thousandth how does that sound um but this is a special screwdriver because because um it services the mythical key fob to eternity this is a specially made tool um I had it ordered through Dr. I or had to order it through Dr. Hubbard's company on Mars. So um, anyway, <laughs> you end up by crypto <laughs> from someone with unstable data. That makes sense. Hey, Wayne, glad to have you here. Joe, good to see you from Pittsburgh, PA. Did you have, did, Joe, did you feel the earthquake? It made news. Uh, you guys back east had a big, oh, was that 4.8? It was a big earthquake. You feel that. Hope everything's okay for you and your family, Joe. Um, good evening, y'all. Hi, Denise. Hi, Rabbit. Step one, exchange galactic credits for Iraqi dinars. Okay, that sounds good. I've got a lot of Iraq, uh, galactic credits built up. Step two, postulates. That should be a part of any um, of any investment strategy is OT postulates. And uh, step three, Iraqi currency revaluation. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I, there's actually um, sc scams out there that when the Iraqi currency, um, when they revalue it, it'll just go straight up in vertical like uh, Scientology's orgs or straight down in vertical. Denise, I learned more about the details of the cult from you than anyone else. Well, thank you. There's plenty of people you can learn from. I get into some specifics and areas that, that interest me. I learn a lot from the other creators, too. I learn quite a bit. I like SPTV because of the sharing of information. And uh, I'm going to be doing some live streaming in the near future. I'm going to get back to some live streaming. I've been on assignment, so I've been able to. Monkey Paws, how are you doing, my friend? How are you doing? Okay, so uh, it looks like we have a deal. Looks like we haven't even started the show. We've got a deal, a one one millionth undivided interest in the tool that fixes the key fob to eternity in exchange for unstable data IP and crypto. I think I came out ahead on that deal, but we'll see. Um, good evening, Mr. Augustine. Will we be receiving evidence based evidence tonight? <laughs> Oh, there's some satire on that. Yes, it will be evidence-based evidence, of which I will give evidence for why it is evidence-based. Because really, if you think about it, Mr. Hardman, if that is indeed your real name, and you haven't been sent in by the CIA, because that happens. Um, yeah, evidence-based evidence is better than non-evidence-based evidence. -based evidence. And, and I'm a, a PI, so I should know. But there's also such things as fuckery. Sometimes PI works almost like um, 
doing psychic cold reading. So here's here's what you can do. So when you go, hey, um, you know, people have been talking about you, Mark. Kay Hardman, people have been telling me things about you. Yeah, I know all about it. And uh, you're getting in, you're getting in real deep. I think maybe you should talk about it. And I don't know, you know, I don't know what they're doing. I just know they did something wrong. But that's the that's the art of the interview. Um, so, um, but you will be getting evidence based evidence this evening, and all evenings. Um, in fact, um, um, I have some evidence based evidence right here. If you knew what was on this and where it's going to, and the trouble is going to cause a certain, a certain uh, ne'er-do-well. Oh, he does not know what is on the stick. That's going to cost him a boatload of money. And uh, it might even um, <clears throat> lead to some other things. So only evidence-based evidence, unless I say otherwise, um, and, unless it's like unstable datums, crypto, which is not evidence-based, but it's a postulate. So um, I want clear and developed undivided interest. <laughs> yeah, you would because all of, all of your attention units would be free. That's what Hubbard said that our attention, he, what he did is he um, called our attention, it was based on attention units and kind of like, you know, you could have like free attention units and stuck attention units. So by going clear, you would free all your attention units and you could put your undivided interest on how the hell you're going to pay for the OT levels in your OT preps and your sex checks. May the force be with you. Oh, I like that meme with the horse. Bless Zenu, I am here. Well, Zenu be praised. I'm glad you're here because I was going to have to send Zenu and his minions out to fetch you summons you on a galactic um galactic warrant um all right pull it over xenu where are you headed with that dc8 space plane it's one of my favorite lines and why are all the frozen bodies coming out you headed to some volcano some volcano are you going to okay registration and license um can you imagine that would be a fun skit um, um hello warrior queen glad to see you here uh, oh, on the earthquake. Um, no, it was in the other lower corner of the state. The Philly org probably felt it, though. It was an NG. You know, those OTs on the East Coast, they failed to predict or stop the earthquake. Pam, hi from PA. Yes, felt the earthquake here. I hope your uh, everything worked out. We've ridden through some of those shakers out here. And, you know, the thing is, they don't, you don't know when they're going to come. You just don't know place to start shaking and um <clears throat> hello eli's mom hello all just want to compliment you jeffrey on the bnw gruesome graphic you showed last episode very cool well thank you yeah that um i'm going to probably use in a media that i'm i'm in uh talks with a media company and i want to get something powerful so i really appreciate that feedback nice is that a collie beautiful dog hello sarasota jerry does it come as a Phillips screwdriver? Um, <clears throat> this is a flathead. Yes, I have the companion Phillips screwdriver, but I under walking before you run with this uh, IPO on the um, unstable datum crypto, I'm not gonna give them anywhere near the Phillips screwdriver, you know, until I get a big payoff. I need to make several million before he can even think about getting the, um, you know, before he can even think about getting into the Phillips screwdriver. So, because these are very sensitive tools. I could actually, Jerry, if you ever had dental work problems, I took a, a, a an online course uh, to, do, do, to do dentistry. And I'm not certified or qualified in any way, but I read about it. But I could help you in an emergency with this, with dental work. The outcome wouldn't be good, and I'd make you sign waivers and such. But... This can do a lot of things, including dental work, or just if you need to pick your teeth. Um, no, he doesn't get anywhere near it, but I do have it. Um, 
Earthquake attended San Francisco 89, then LA 92. It's not funny stuffs, but I guess hurricanes are the alternative. Boy, I was born, I was born out here. <clears throat> as a third, I'm a third generation Angelino, and I've been through the Northridge uh, 94 was the worst of them all. Terrifying, just four in the morning. 4 a.m. in the morning, and that's, I think it was a 7.4, the final real adjusted magnitude, little monster. Um, working on the invisibility tech, hard enough, I could really go for that. Being seen is annoying, the face orange, <laughs> yeah. I don't have the invisibility tech. Um, I mean, I can disappear, but like that would be like physically moving behind a wall or something. Sometime you need to discuss the impossible physics of DC-8s flying in space. I did that with Aaron on a show, why uh, you would have to exceed the speed of light to, to, for um, incident two of OT3. Well, w just one of the things, <clears throat> Jerry, if you thought a, a DC-8 space, a, a DC-8 airframe, you know, it goes up like 550 miles. You get up to around 700 and the wings would rip off. You need escape velocity from Earth of what, uh, 18,005? I'm going from the top of my head. You're not going to get a DC-8 airframe. It, you get it up past around 700 miles an hour. It's going to just dissolve and break apart. Hello, adorable anarchy. Glad to see you here. Uh, yes, you'll go invisible if you go into the non-existent Sea Org, uh, especially if there's live streamers around, they will uh, make you disappear. Big LA earthquake, yeah, 94. All my fences fell down and my liquor broke. Uh, you know, I my fences fell down in the 84 um, Woodier Narrows earthquake, uh, us young and single lived in Woodier, California. And... Uh, I went to my house and uh, all the liquor, uh, the refrigerator doors opened, everything emptied out, all all the booze bottles fell out. My house felt like a distillery. That's the first thing I smelled when I walked in. So, yeah, they uh, they get uh, they get big, and um, my fences fell down, and that was a just a mess. Um, Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the OT level edit to my Earthquake 92. It makes the wasted millions to get to OT, pretty sure. I was in Beverly, Bev Hills, which is on Bedrock. Nothing sugar broke. Yeah, some places, you know, it's the seismic wave. And the um, the seismic waves in Whittier, 84, the, the seismic waves came up. So you'd have three buildings go down, two stay up two go down, three go, so you could actually see the wave on um, Uptown Whittier, as they call it, three buildings up, two down, three up, one down, four down, one up, as the waves hit, so it just depends on the frequency. Um, Whittier hadn't seen that turbulence since Nixon, that's true, President Richard Nixon, uh, his, uh, grew up in Whittier, and he went to the college there, and his first law offices was right there on, uh, Greenleaf in Uptown, they have a plaque there. Um, we don't get earthquakes in Florida because all the OTs in Clearwater keep them at bay. True. Yes, it's, it's, but you know, the insurance rates in Florida, I'm reading all these articles, Jerry, about how the insurance rates are going, insurers are pulling out of the state. So interesting stuff. But let's jump into the show. We've chatted, we got you warmed up. And uh, I want to add this. So we're talking about, I'm using examples of Scientologist businesses being run badly. Um, L. Ron Harbord, How to Run Your Business Using Galactic Principles, he claimed, um, Dr. Hubbard claimed that his business principles, which they sell through um, the World Institute of Scientology Enterprises, WISE, Business Consulting, Hubbard claimed that his business tech was based on a civilization that was lasted for 80 trillion years. And um, he said that in a 1965 interview. So how to run your business using galactic principles. And that's, uh, you know, that's something to think about. Because uh, you're not going to use regular 
you're not going to use regular, uh, you know, WOG principles. You're going to use galactic principles. So Hubbard said that these were uh, galactic principles that had kept a civilization going for 80 trillion years. Wow, that's a long time. And uh, so that's proven data. And um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty good. Um, so I was just uh, doing some uh, checking around on things, and this came to my attention, and it's called Attention Grabbing Media. Attention Grabbing Media. And so Attention Grabbing Media. This is a, a company owned by a Scientologist. Attention Grabbing Media. And uh, the fellow who owns it, he claims to be called the Facebook Ninja. And <laughs> no one's ever heard of him. Um, so they make the claims about everything you're going to do and ab about us. So you can see this website. He's got some exciting, exciting over $250 million in yearly revenue generated, which I haven't been able to confirm any of this. You know, I did some digging into attention grabbing media. And the reason I'm doing this is this is up on the internet. So it's, you know, I can show it. And um, the uh, founder of attention grabbing media is uh, Manuel Suarez, Manuel Suarez, and I'm going to show you Manuel Suarez. Okay, there's Manuel Suarez. He's the founder of Attention Grabbing Media. He's a Scientologist out of Clearwater, and he tells the story of uh, how he started from the bottom and went to the top of an eight-figure business, which would mean in the tens of millions of dollars. So I was curious. Now, he bills himself. You can see he's known as the Facebook ninja. But, th folks, this is such non This is such pure and utter nonsense. Whenever he says, known as the Facebook ninja, no, he's not. That's something he made up. If you Google Facebook ninja, you don't get this guy. So these are the kinds of ridiculous claims known as the Facebook Ninja. Manuel Suarez has helped thousands of small businesses. You know, I will bet if I actually did an investigation, he has not helped thousands of businesses. I challenge that. I'm skeptical. Whenever you see claims, someone self-promoting the Facebook Ninja, no, I don't find that anywhere. There's he has helped thousands of small business increase their digital presence. Really, thousands? I would like an audit of that. I could be wrong, but uh, when we start seeing his clients, we see familiar Scientologist names. Dr. Eric Berg, the Keto King. Damon John, I don't know about that. Chick Korea, Nancy Cartwright. So, you know, I'm, I, I became very skeptical. And uh, I want to show you uh, what he's doing. So let's go back to the big screen. Now, one thing you look at when, when you look at a website, I look at the testimonials because usually these are self-referential. So when we go down there, exciting graphics. What our clients think. Now, Frank Suarez is a client, and we'll get to him in a minute. And... Then we have Dr. Eric Berg, who's a Scientologist. So, so far, and his son, of course, Ian, left, publicly renounced uh, Scientology and had a, a falling out with his father. So, uh, Dr. Eric Berg claims, claims that uh, attention-grabbing media is genius. He says, we range from, um, you know, anyway, he gives numbers that, so Eric Berg... Um, Riggs Ecclesbury, we're going to get into him, Rig, Riggs Ecclesbury, uh, President and CEO of Origin Clear. We're going to have an interesting story about him. He's a Scientologist. And, of course, Nancy Cartwright is internationally famous 
as the voice of Bart Simpson. She's an internationally famous voice actress, very talented. She doesn't need attention-grabbing media. She was famous. Uh, she was famous before Manuel uh, Suarez was born. I mean, come on, you don't need Nancy Cartwright doesn't need help. And but uh, there's a success story in there. And then senior healthcare director Ruddy Rodriguez, who's a Scientologist, and she th these people are basically saying, "I'm getting help with my social media accounts." And uh, Dr. J uh, Jerry Jarrett, and of course uh, Jay Kami. So these are the people. Now these we're going to get to too. Doctors Steph and Tom Cheney, co-founders of the Living Health Integrative Medicine authors of the best-selling books, Defeat Diabetes and Lose the Gluten, Use Your Gut, Ditch the Grain, Save Your Brain. We're going to get into these guys. Uh, so this is a Scientology business. Yes, Rico Suave, exactly, exactly. Um, height of irony, I thought that Scientologists aren't allowed on social media. They are, but they can't, they don't really, talk about Scientology unless it's pre-approved. But yes, you could be a Scientologist and go on social media. However, you can't read in Theta or Black PR. So you make a good point. Um, whose bottom did he start with, <laughs> Reverend Hoyer asks. <laughs> yes, whose bottom did he start with? Well, uh, you know... <laughs> Facebook Ninja is very early 2000s. Everyone had whimsical job titles. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Facebook Ninja. Careful. Say his name 10 times fast. Yeah, Riggs Eckleberry. Uh, I know more about that guy than he realizes. And uh, <laughs> my name is Fondue Expert on my name tag at work. Wee oui, wee. Oui. A Fondue Expert in the audience. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen space aliens everyone listening we have a fondue expert that's like that shows how big this show's getting to have noted fondue experts online okay so um i'm gonna stop sharing okay so you get the point he just scrolls through oh by the way one thing whenever you investigate whether it's a pi or an investigative analyst or just a youtube researcher Anyone can investigate. There's just a difference where you need a license to do some certain things. But one thing you want to do, I'm going to give you a pro tip here. We see his blog. So let's get his blog. Blog. There's a gra attention grabbing media, the blog. One thing when you investigate, you want to look at the dates. Do they keep their website up? And it looks like this, uh, it looks like a Daniel. Uh, I'm sorry, Manuel Suarez, genius, marketing genius, social media marketing genius, has not updated his own blog since September 8, 2023. Oh, 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 I got to say this. Manuel, bitch. If you're going to promote yourself as a social media genius, you have to hit it every day, every day. September 18. So now we go October 18, November. December, January, February, March, and we're at April. What is that? Almost seven months with no update to your blog, and you're supposed to be hot shit on social media? That's a complete fail, a flunk. I mean, really, if you're a social media wizard and you don't update your own damn blog for seven months, you're a failure. And I say that with 30 years in corporate, okay? Okay. So I'm not just some guy. And I have a blog, and it gets updated regularly. You know, so, uh, and the YouTube, SPTV, SPTV, other people who create content, we're up all the time. That's what you do. You don't, this is such a failure. You, when you don't update for seven months on your blog, I mean, come on. You're, that's... L. Ron Harbert said that a wog is, quote, someone who's not even trying, unquote. So I'm sorry, man. Well, it looks like you're not even trying because your previous post, your previous update came in July. I mean, look, it, that's, 
you go back that far and you got some in April. So you have a post April 2nd. That was a year ago. So you've only done, okay, so we're in April. Come up to present time, <clears throat> ma'am. Well, okay, so on April 2, we're April 5, 2024. So since last year, you've done exactly one, two, uh, three, four, five posts. Five blog, hold on, five blog posts in a year and you're a social media guru? No, you're a clown. You're a clown running your mouth. F five in a year and you're supposed to be helping TV's voice of Bart Simpson increase their media presence? See, this is the kind of BS SPTV was created to expose. Five, that's all you can manage? Like, what do you do with your time? What, what are you doing with your time? Helping rig Riggs Eckleberry? Well, I mean, and I'm going to show you why I don't think you're helping him. So I'll teach him what to do, says Adam Carmona. I'm a, I'm MySpace, I'm a MySpace samurai. <laughs> My space samurai. That is so funny. Deadly on my space. It's an old, old platform. Yeah, well, I'll teach. I'll have you know, Adam, if that's your real name, because I suspect everyone here um, of being sent in by the CIA to infiltrate my channel. Um, no, um, I'm a Windows 98 expert. So there, try to top that, Windows 98. I, I even know how to write uh, Fortran and uh, BASIC. I know how to write COBOL. So that puts me back in the 80s. So Adam, if, okay, so this dude with uh, attention-grabbing media, Manuel Suarez, can only do five posts on his blog in a year, and that's supposed to be his primary source of income. Man, that's that's a whatever the lowest condition is in Scientology. I think it's what is it? Confusion. Find out where you're at. I don't know if he knows where he's at. Ron was a Commodore sixty four <laughs> DOS doctor. That's good to know. Um, Ron Ron was LRH on MySpace. No. LRH was from outer space. You, did, did you know that L. Ron Hubbard once told a group, it's on a lecture, I have it, I'll play it one time, that he said that, uh, uh, I am not from this planet and I need your help. <laughs> he actually said that, uh, I'm not from this planet. No, he was not. He was not from this planet along with Janet from another planet. Um, Lotus123, what you see is what you get. Wow, we're going back into old tech of the Apollo was dust boat. <laughs> Timex Sinclair with 2K RAM, baby. You know, I have a, a um, sometimes Karen and I uh, buy estates and um, I have this four function calculator. I thought it, I thought I had it at hand. I was going to show it, but I don't. But I've got this really cool 70 zero, one of the early four function calculators. Um, Tons of employees listed on their website, fake stock photos, CRQ, could be all the above, all of the above. My vodka grapefruit tastes amazing during your, during your Friday Night Live lives. Well, good. I'm glad. I was thinking of having a uh, Jack and Coke, but I will stick with um, iced tea. The Duke of Chug was a master of Incom, true. Incom was... Um, uh, Scientology's, it, it still is Scientology's computer program based on written advices by the Duke of Chug. And El, um, Chug Beatty, I would like to have him on, interview him about the Duke of Chug. I'm pouring water. So I'm going to pour some more tea java here. So it might sound, okay, there. That's what you're hearing. That's what you're hearing. And um, uh, wow. Wow. I actually just met someone else in this for a trend. Wow. Yeah. It was like real back in the day. Uh, you know, when I was in college, I worked at Radio Shack my last two years and I sold a TRS-80 and I sold so many and I got really good. I was like sold more TRS-80s um, 
that I was actually offered a job at Tandy Center after I graduated from college. And that's the last place I wanted to go because they were using the operating system. And I saw that DOS was the future. Arr, there you go. Um, I had a Space Invader. Oh, wow. How cool is that? A Space Invader game watch. I'm jealous. I want one. And I also want a uh, vodka grapefruit. That's good. If I could take a break, I would get something. Okay, so let's go back to um, okay the pro no so okay so uh, I want to show you this slide and I have to track it here. Now um, we saw the testimonials, so we're going to go to the next testimonial. Now on Manuel's attention grabbing media, he has Frank Suarez, and that's his father who is giving him a testimony. Now, now this is a social media genius, Manuel Suarez, Scientologist. Nothing wrong with having your dad, but, but there is a problem. There is actually a problem here. And, um, okay, there is a problem we have. This is the problem with having Frank Suarez, uh, this is the problem with having Frank Suarez as one of your testimonials. And I'm going to have to share this. and Let me find it. And this is somewhat, uh, I'll let you decide. Let me see where the screen is. Okay, let me share this. Tony Ortega put this on his blog. Frank Suarez, uh, Frank Suarez in uh, February of 2021, he was an OT8, very famous in Latin America for his books, father of uh, Manuel. He jumped to his death. He unalived himself as an OT8. And that was in 2021, February. So now we're uh, 2022, 2023, 2024. So three years later, uh, a dead man serves as a testimonial for a social media company owned by a Scientologist. And what's not disclosed is that his father unalived himself. He jumped from the ninth floor uh, of his condo, ninth floor condo in uh, San Juan. And that's tragic. That is tragic. And it's also false advertising in as much as that's a th this is a dead man. It's three years old. It's a tragedy. He was an OT8. He was actually, uh, we'll, we'll get to some other information. So this is, this is something about Scientology business. This is dishonest. In my opinion, I'll give my opinion, this is dishonest for a number of reasons. This his father has been dead for three years. He can't, that's not a credible testimony. And he, he fails to disclose that his father took his own life. And uh, Tony notes, excellent article by Tony Ortega. He says, um, we couldn't help but thinking about another Scientologist, um, Evgeny Zarkin, who fell out of the eighth floor of a Clearwater building in 2014 after he'd spent 30 hours traveling from Moscow to Scientology's flag land base, we published the police investigation of Zarkin's death, which concluded that there was no foul play and suggested that groggy from his flight, he'd simply fallen out of a window he thought led to a balcony. But the county medical examiner concluded it was a suicide. And you would have to have read the report, and it was a suicide, uh, um, unaliving himself. Um, as uh, Tony Ortega noted, uh, Frank Suarez was the president of the way to happiness. And yet, uh, that's what happened. So that advertising doesn't look good. Uh, when you use your dead father who took his own life and you're using him to promote that to me is uh caustic. It's, 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 something a user would do. It doesn't 
in my opinion, it doesn't honor his father. It's sort of uh, using, using something, and it's not correct advertising. So, uh, you know, so that's just what I wanted to note. And uh, Tony, of course, noted that on his Twitter feed that um, he was the president of the um, Way to Happiness Foundation in Puerto Rico. And he was a major promoter of the idea that Scientology would give him the keys to a happy life. He was a well-known and respected author. And yet that's what happened. And now his son is withholding material facts and using really old, out-of-date testimonials. So this is why uh, I say when you investigate a company in whatever capacity you want to investigate it, is their website current? Are the testimonies old? Are the people who give the testimonies uh, that still alive? In this case, no. The Scientologist-owned company are using testimonials that are at least three years old, so they're out of date. At least one of the people is dead, and they perished at their own hand. And he was an OT8, and, and Frank Suarez, as an OT8, used gravity to used gravity and distance, nine stories, to exteriorize. And I don't know that he exteriorized with full perceptions, but he went permanently exterior. And I made an argument in my last video. If the body's such a problem, uh, if the body's such a damn problem that the only goal is to go exterior, then just end it. So we don't know what happened, but this this struck me as some of the dishonesty you see out there. And again, this is my opinion, but I do have the evidence here. It is evidence-based evidence. There is a coroner's report. We know that he uh, took his own life. So... And I wanted to throw in um, last last episode, which was kind of dark, and I understand it's kind of heavy, but Hubbard said the definition of an operating Thetan was a Thetan who can be at cause knowingly and at will over thought, life, matter, energy, space, and time, subjective and objective. And yet OT8 Frank Suarez, who, was, who had a lot of money, lived in a nice condo in Puerto Rico, had a big audience, sold a lot of books, on his health books, um, he was not knowingly and at will at cause or thought. And so he, because anyone uh, wouldn't in their own existence, that's not a rational thing when he was healthy and had money and we don't know what, what demons drove him. So that's something that got, that his own son leaves out of his business testimonials. Now, there's testimonials we saw from when we went to uh, the um, the website, the previous website. Uh, we had testimonials uh, from Dr. Thomas A. Cheney, and he actually, I want to show you uh, that his wife is Stephanie Cheney. They're also clients. They're also clients of um, Manuel Suarez. So, um, I do I still have that page up? Anyway, they were, they're also clients. Now, I, I, I was checking them out because they're, they're acting as um, endorsing him. They're endorsing him. And so I checked into them, and I want to share a screen. I wanted to know who they were. Who are Dr. Thomas A. Cheney and Stephanie Cheney? And again, this is when you investigate a website, you always look at who the actual people are. So if I can share a screen, this is what they do. Okay, now they have a, uh, I checked them out, they're living, they're integrative, whatever it's called, integrative medicine. And... Um, they have a what's called a defeat diabetes boot camp defeat diabetes boot camp and um basically what you get is a, a, a starter package for 97 dollars, and 
they promise you that in 30 day lifestyle change, you'll lose weight, increase energy, and improve your sleep, lower A1C. So they're making actual medical claims that you will lower your A1C. That's something for which they would have legal liability because will their program actually lower A1C in all people in 100%? They say that is the, the goal for you, but they're actually, they're making a claim, but they're shifting the goal onto you. This is a Scientology trick that's very subtle. Make a promise, okay, defeat diabetes boot camp. You're making a promise that you have an answer and and yet you're saying the goal is. So you take their money, but you shift the goal onto them. That's why Scientology on their statements by staff members say that you cannot rely on any statement made by a staff member. And Elwin Hubbard never promised you anything. So they take your money and shift the results onto you. And Scientology says, we don't make any promises to you. And that's why you have to write success stories. You have to attest that you got results from Scientology. The church in their contracts say that we promise you nothing. And you can see this echoed in this particular thing by this couple who are clients of uh, the the media guru who can only make five posts in a year and he hasn't made one in seven months. And look at this. This is a very Grant Cardone-like program. Membership access to 40 plus modules. So this is just uh, basically selling lectures. Now, when you look into these two, th this couple, okay, so... Um, they're selling you a package of things and they're, and along with it, you go, you get bonus materials. And so they're, they're basically just selling you, they created a package and they say that they're selling you 33 clinically effective strategies. Well, we don't know that for the simple reason that your instructors are chiropractors. They're chiropractors. They're not medical doctors. I would have to say that when a chiropractor offers you medical advice, run as fast as you can. I, their training in biology, if they had it, it would have been at a four-year college. And, and what do they know about lowering A1C because they're chiropractors? And this is what he's promoting on social media. So... Um, that's who these people are. These are chiropractors and they're selling themselves as experts and uh, they're selling themselves as experts. So again, that's a Scientology business. So let me get, let me get this back on here. Um, so they're selling themselves as experts and they're offering a package that can claim to lower diabetes and yet they're chiropractors. So again, this is looking into, uh, Scientology, and if I went into any litigation research, which I may do to see if they've been, uh, uh, if they have been uh, sued, I haven't done that part. But I, you know, that's again, that's looking into it. So, so we have uh, that part of the program. We have chiropractors claiming to offer you a program that will lower your your A one C level, and it's a package. So you have a Scientologist promoting the pseudoscience of another Scientologist, promoting uh, his dead father who took his own life. So that's what we're getting down into. Um, now, I want to just get into Hubbard's, uh, Hubbard's org board. This was a recent picture in social media and uh, the Sea Org members excited She's so very excited. Look at that. Look at that look at excitement. Uh, yes, Eric Berg is a chiropractor too. Same claims exactly, Eli's mom. Um, chiropractors making, yeah, report them all to the AMA. Yes, please do. Um, so yeah, Dr. Berg is a chiropractor. And whenever they make medical claims for which they are unqualified to do, that's something you report them on. But if you look in their fine print, you'll always see that 
these claims have not been verified by the FDA, and they always have a lot of legal language to try to get them out, but that doesn't always work. Um, so the reason I bring up the org board is this is all based on Lauren Hubbard's org board. And I have some other things to show you too, but I just want to jump into that. The sure excitement, oh my gosh, class five organizing board checklist. I'm so excited. Something I just want to note about the org board in passing is that the org board, Scientology's org board is not based on an, an ancient galactic society that lasted for 80 trillion years. L. Ron Harbert stole it from the United States Navy in World War II. And this is a, a, one of the many org boards the United States Navy used in World War II that L. Ron Harbert would have seen. And in fact, the Bureau of Ships has a classic five division. And an or Scientology brags about its seven division org board, but this is a five division that breaks down. And at the uh, Chief of Naval Operations, he, if you want to count the, um, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at the bottom. He had a nine division it breaks down into. So there's four divisions at the top and so on. So Hubbard stole the org board. I just want lurking Scientologists to know that, that this is all World War II. That's where the org board came from. This is Ron's division, or I'm sorry, Ron's org board, the seven division org board. And so you can see that it comes right from the U.S. Navy. It's not um, nothing to do with galactic federations or societies. So, uh, so much for that. Ron Hubbard, just a, you know, just another uh, quack stealing U.S. Navy stuff and relabeling it and then selling it for a lot of money. And then you have wise business consultants, and then you have people you know, uh, social media experts, supposedly. So one of the people that um, Suarez is promoting is uh, Riggs Ecclesbury. And he's saying how fantastic he's doing, but he's someone I've been keeping an eye on for a long time. And I want to get the uh, company he owns called Origin, Origin Clear. Origin Clear. And I'm going to go share that screen. So let me get origin clear for you. That's Rig Eckleberry, who has, there's a lot of colorful stories I could tell. I have th information about him on my blog if you want to Google him. But he's saying, he's, he's selling a portable water treatment device. And he's saying basically that, um, this is his website, Infrastructure in Crisis. And he's, basically talking about um, water and uh, he's just showing that this is just copy pasta and he's throwing out, look at these numbers. Okay. The reason I'm showing you uh, Riggs' site is um, he's throwing out numbers that there's an investment gap of 2.2 trillion. He's throwing out big trillion dollar numbers. And he's getting official looking stuff from the Congressional Budget Office, annual allocation in billions. So he's talking in billions and trillions of dollars. And he seems to saying that he has the solution to these problems that are billions and trillions of dollars. And uh, one thing I want to say when I was in corporate is that, you know, I'm a, I've shared before, new listeners may not know, I'm a technical, scientific and technical lighting expert by training. And I did work on, as part of my portfolio in, in scientific lighting, covered lighting takes you everywhere. Some, sometimes you work, because lighting has a wave particle duality, sometimes you work with the wave function, sometimes you work with particles. So I worked in UVC air and water treatment, going from UVC units that countertop point of use in the home to major reactors that do millions of gallons a day. And the UVC photon, um, basically you would run the water around the UVC emitter, the lamp, and um, it was sleeved and it would tear up the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA and deactivate uh, all the microorganisms in water. You'd first pre-filter it. So I know a lot about water and I worked in that for a long time. 
So what Riggs is doing, I can follow him. And um, uh, let's just see. So this is why it's important to me. Um, so I know what Riggs is doing. I would I would say I know a lot more about water than he does reading his site. I worked professionally in the industry. And so this is one reason I object to what he's doing. And let's get back in here. So this is Riggs, Riggs Ecclesbury's company, and he's throwing out trillions and billions of dollars. And then he talks about investing. So he went, he's actually selling these limited master partnerships. Uh, and he's got this wholly owned subsidiary supposedly called Water on Demand. And this, you don't really, you have to dig into it. He's basically just hustling for money and investments. And the technology is not remarkable, in my opinion, in any way. Like, what is the total offering? He's looking for $20 million for the founder shares in Wodi. And this is, uh, when you dig into this uh, water on demand, so he's looking for uh he's looking for money. He wants twenty million. And yet he's been around a long time and he's t telling a success story. But again, when you start digging into business, you want to look at so he's looking for money. But but let's look at the company itself, because this is what gets really interesting. Is I'm going to uh go into uh Yahoo financial which i like it's a quick place to go it's free it's not you don't need a subscription like when you I, some of my other sites that i use as an investor um okay so origin clear is a penny stock look at its value 0. 0.0102 <laughs> it's down 11 percent so you have something worth um what one one hundredth of a penny that's Riggs Eckleberry, that's his stock for Origin Clear. It's a penny stock. That is its value. As of right now, you're looking live. Uh, that's its value. Yeah, and yeah, Riggs is capitalizing on fear. True, he's capitalizing on fear. And uh, Nikki, he is. Um, I have such a survival library of books. Any homesteader does. Yeah, you could, nothing wrong with uh, having some basic uh, emergency supplies. So, um, uh, Nikki, that like, let's dial it back a little bit. Uh, the OSS is, is, no, is defunct. That was the precursor of the CIA. So, uh, might want to just get updated there. But I, I hear what you're saying. But, uh, we're not going into to that kind of content, but th appreciate your comments. Psych sauce, glad. I was wondering where you were. I was wondering if you'd gotten psych sauce, if the psychs had captured you and lobotomized you, maybe subject you to electroshock or feel good pills. I was going to send the operatives from Scientology Citizen Commissions on Human Rights to get you out of you know where they had you locked up by the government. I like that. I look at her eyes are rolled up. Her eyes are rolled up as if she's in a swoon of some kind, or she's. Um, anyway, I like that picture. It has <laughs> really great. Okay, so this is Origin Clear. Now again, um, Suarez is promoting this, and he's not telling you the story that this is a penny stock. This is a penny stock, and if you look at the. <laughs> <laughs> the trading range. So he's got some, you know, uh, Riggs is not doing well. I wanted to show you go, performance. Here's what I wanted to show you. Whenever you look at stock chart, performance of OCLN, okay? So the five-year return, you go to the right, the five-year return versus the, uh, versus the uh, S&P 500, which in the last five years, you would have gotten a, uh, 79 percent return i've done a little bit better but um uh, i study tech and follow it you would have gotten a minus 99.54 
So for every you know dollar you would have invested with uh, Origin Clear and rigs, you would have lost ninety nine point five cents. You would have had half a penny or even less. Now this year, he's up three percent, but that means he's up as we saw. He's up from probably <laughs> he's up thirteen percent. So you're moving in hundreds of pennies, <laughs> you know, two decimal places, tenths, and then one hundredths. So I guess you're up 13%. So you're, you know, you're still at um, a hundredths of a penny, <laughs> but you're up 13%. So that's almost meaningless. But again, this is how you dig into Scientology business. When you get down to the carny level, you get down to the carny level. And, and uh, you start seeing what it really is. So that's where we, we, when we tear down, when we tear down, we find out uh, what it's really about. So, so the social media guru, the Facebook ninja, is promoting a penny stock that's five-year performance. You would have lost 99.5% of your money investing in them. And that, you know, that, hundreds of a penny you have left went up uh, 13.3 last year. So that probably bumped it up to what? 0 0.018 or whatever you get the point. So right now he's down. You can see here at the bottom of the chart, he's down 11%. So this is kind of bad. Um, psych sauce. It's good to feel wanted. Well, we do. We want you here on the show. I think it's important. Anyone who selects sauce should have a say. Um, Nikki, you don't have to use all caps. Uh, you know, let's just like, um, hey, Rube, everyone came running with chains and baseball bats. Me and my mother were carnies. <laughs> okay. That stock is day trader bait. You know what, Adam? I would say like I've done day trading in penny stocks for fun. It was like, like it's almost like uh, watching daytime soap operas. I took like, it's what, here's a fun thing I do, Adam. Here's a fun thing I do. I have like a $50 account. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. If you have eyesight problems, then you can do all caps. That's fine. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be sensitive. But yeah, you can also make your monitor bigger. You can resize your monitor up to, if you go up to the left-hand corner and click, you know, resize, you can get it up to 300%. Sometimes I do up 200%. I read it 200% because the print's so small. But um, Adam, uh, sometimes, you know, I have an account like 50 or $100. No, it's like $100. I think I start at 50, add 100. So I do, I play a game. And Karen indulges me where it's just penny stocks. You know, like Riggs, uh, I wouldn't buy his his Origin Clear. I just wouldn't. There's better penny stocks. And it's just a game that you play with 50 or 100 bucks. And, and sometimes to go into the penny stock forums, it's really funny to read. So that's like a guilty pleasure of mine is playing with penny stocks. And if I lose like, six dollars like if i bought if i bought origin clear and held it you know i could probably move if it, if rigs you know had any movement at all <laughs> you know i could make maybe as much as three or four cents on that six dollar investment if i held it maybe long term <laughs> so this is what happens when but uh rigs um I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to looking at him. So on his PR and his company he's talking about trillions and billions of dollars and how water's a precious commodity and um you know 70% of the earth 70% plus of the earth is covered by water and only 1% of the water on earth is fresh water and a lot of that's locked up in glaciers. So yeah, fresh water is a big deal in water treatment, water conservation. That's a big market. But what Riggs is doing, if you study his business model, his leasing, his financing on these modules, it's 
there's no value proposition that I can see. You know, me personally, having worked in water and wastewater treatment, uh, wastewater remediation, drinking water, um, I don't see any value proposition myself as an investor. So I found something uh, about rigs that uh, I'm sure he will not want us to share, but it's all public. That's why I keep preaching open source intelligence. Anything that's public that you can get off the internet is you can just share it. So I wanted to sh share something else about um, uh, Scientologists who gets promoted as the, you know the the great water wizard, and this is this is akin to the diabetes boot camp, and it's a legal filing. So I got dig I got interested in uh, rigs, and uh, here we go. So rigs uh, had ha a lawsuit. <laughs> Okay, this is kind of funny. Riggs had a lawsuit. Sometimes it's so much fun to just dumpster dive into these characters and see their legal filings. And um, I'm going to show you maybe a hack. It's one of my tricks. It'll save you a lot of time. Okay, this is Origin Clear Incorporated. Riggs Ecclesbury OT. Now, what this guy did is he... Uh, he borrowed some money. He, you know, his uh, finances are just really bad. Then this is what you can do as a, as an investor. And uh, this was this was a decision and order, okay. Decision and order. But what we learned, look at these numbers. Uh, the judge notes uh, origin clear. And now you're gonna, I'm highlighting it. The judge is right. The court writes, Origin Clear, a company that sells a line of on-site point-of-use water treatment products, <clears throat> operated at a financial deficit between 2016 and 2018. Uh, specifically in 2016, Origin Clear's revenue was $5 million. Operating expenses were $5 million. And, total, and a total loss from operations was, call it $3.6 million. In 2017, the total revenue was $3.3 and total loss was 5.2 million. And you can just see uh, the next year, total loss was 4 million. So what happened, uh, it's a money losing, it's a money losing venture. And what happened is Riggs basically went to a payday loan company, uh, GTR, and he borrowed, he borrowed $160,000. So Riggs had to borrow 160000 But what's crazy is he would have had to repay 239 And according to plaintiffs, this imposed an interest rate of 49.9% or 303% annually. So if Riggs, I mean, you should be, if his technology is going to save water treatment throughout the world and he's citing trillions and billions on his website, and he is selling fear, uh, as Nikki noted, um, he's having to borrow 160000 just to keep afloat. And this I'm going to post on my blog. But basically, this, uh, <laughs> this company, it's like a hard money lender, but they go into really astronomical rates. Because normally, normally uh, hard money is just a term for, uh, instead of going to the bank, let's say you're you're a developer and you're building a, an apartment and you, things don't go your way and you're short. Uh, so you need more time because there was a zoning problem or there was back order, whatever. Let's say that you need a, a $800,000 for 10 months to finish your, your uh, let's say you're building 12, 12 units and you need 800,000 for, for 10 months. You can actually go to private individuals who loan at 10 to 15 percent and they'll secure it against a deed on your property and that's called a bridge loan and you do it hard money you can skip the bank and if you have property to secure it against i mean i have friends who do that who do hard money lending and they do very well but they always secure their uh loan against real property and it works out well for the developer and it works out well for them 
and you just pay a higher interest rate, but you get the money fast and you don't have to go through all the banking thing. Now, rigs, apparently, and, and I, I could be wrong, rigs, you could write to me, you could call me on the phone. Um, you can call me on my special phone. Hello, Riggs. Yeah, I'm on air. Let's talk later. Um, so Riggs actually went to, and this is one of my questions about why would he, if he's such an OT, Scientologist, Hubbard trained in business, go to uh, borrow money at these astronomical rates of 303% annually? And what happened, this lawsuit is really comical to read. And, and, uh, Riggs is arguing that this was usury and he shouldn't have to pay, but he had signed some notes. Um, he had signed some agreements where he agreed not to, um, uh, without going into legal language, he agreed to not pursue those remedies. Um, it gave GTR the right to seek repayment in the event of a default, et cetera, et cetera, the, you know, and pay their legal fees. And he inside he uh, signed a confession of judgment and things. So basically, Riggs signed away all his rights, and then he came back and, and sued. And this is when you burrow down into Scientology businesses. You'll you'll inevitably, be, not in all of them, but in many of them, you will find lawsuits. And so look at the cascade. You have. Uh, the Scientologist claiming to be a social media guru, the Facebook ninja, and yet his number one client is his father who unalived himself, and that's three-year-old data. And then you have another client raving who is basically in control of a company that's a penny stock. It's an over-the-counter penny stock that's worthless. And he had to borrow 160000 to keep going a few years ago. And he's bragging now that he has one of the original sharks from Shark Tank investing. So um, this this is how it gets, you know. And then we have uh, chiropractors who claim that they could handle your diabetes or cure your diabetes. They have degrees in kinesiology and they're chiropractors. And so this is how the thing goes, and they're excited because it's all built around the org board. Um, I'm going to show you something else. And so this is why this is the artist self-promoting. Uh, and I'm going to show you another, share another screen um, of self-promotion. And this is sort of how the uh, Scientology ecosystem works. When you get Grant Cardone's the ultimate self-promoter, and he has his problems and his critics. Um, and then he will cite Scientology as the reason for helping him. He, you know, but he's got, he has a lot of debt and he's not financially transparent. And if you read uh, Grant Cardone's um, 10 Ks from the Securities Exchange Commission, you, you have no voting rights, you have no power, your money's locked up. So this is how, um, Scientology businesses, but this one marketing guru, I'm going to show you another self-promotion that he did. Um, yeah. So this is another one. Uh, apropos of nothing, this is so common in Scientology because they are driven by PR. Okay, so this was a recent uh, thing from June 5, 2023, so it's within a year. Okay, now... This is what Scientologists do. And they're not, it's not exclusive to Scientology. It's a lot of the carnies do it. It says, join Manuel Suarez, marketing industry leader. Now, could he be sued for false advertising? Well, with his father, you know, being one of his testimonials and he's failing to disclose that he took his own life and that's three-year-old data and that he's promoting chiropractors who claim to have a cure for diabetes and he's claiming to be based on LRH tech that stems from an ancient civilization and he's claiming to back a penny stock who's, who's uh, you know, 
a guy had to borrow 160000 to stay in business and got upside down on that. Um, this is the typical Scientology self-promotion. And look at this. He's using buzzwords. Joy Manuel swore as marketing industry leader for a cutting-edge mastermind on AI technologies for business growth. Really? And then he says, renowned marketing minds gather on September 8, 28. Who are the renowned marketing minds? So this self-promotion, when you, you don't have to go very deep to find out it's really, you can, um, you know, it's full of buzzwords and things. But if I do a little bit more digging into uh, Manuel, which I plan to, He's basically saying he, that he has conducted extensive research. What does that mean? He doesn't have a PhD. There's no master's. I don't even know. He was bankrupt in 2010. I don't even know what kind of education he has. But he's saying he's conducted extensive research, has conducted extensive research. What does that constitute? Did you read? What did you read? Did you, I mean, that doesn't mean anything on the benefits of artificial intelligence, really, including chat GBT. So he's saying, based on his knowledge, he's going to offer a masterclass event that will provide attendees with the tools and strategies to implement cutting edge AI technologies in their business. So what he's basically appears to be saying is he's gonna show you how to use chat GBT to write ad copy for your business. Look, you got to run a business every day. I mean, Karen and I own a couple businesses and we don't use chat GPT because chat GPT won't tell you how to make decisions. I mean, if you're writing ad copy, maybe, and I'm pretty sure I just want to make a side note, David Miscavige's recent speech, you know, I heard it. It sounds like they, um, the late Danny Sherman, it sounds like they're using art, uh, they're using, uh, AI, chat GPT, to recreate Danny Sherman's writing because he's permanently exterior now with no perceptions. Um, but again, yeah, you, you note that unstable data, mere puffery is an OT ability. No kidding, it goes beyond mere puffery. Uh, the, green, <laughs> the green and red balls are there. <laughs> This is such an inside baseball joke. If you know what the green or red volumes are, those are the big sets of encyclopedias that have to do with the tech and admin, their decision-making algorithms. Miss Gavish threw all those out. Um, Rich's girl, hello. Happy to hear you again. Rarely make a live. I'm from Pittsburgh, but today I'm literally staying on the side of a Hawaiian volcano. Wow, Mauna Loa. No earthquakes today or eruptions that I felt anyway. Well, that's good, but Rich's girl, I'm concerned. I'm concerned for you, and here's why. If you're staying near a Hawaiian volcano, if you start seeing DC-8 space planes coming in, dropping uh, frozen ice cubes, run. Just get out of there. Just drive away as fast as you can. Because, um, you know, Hubbard said Zenu did one of his dumps in Hawaii. So just be on the lookout for DC-8 space planes. But glad to have you on the show, and you you missed the uh, the shaking. Um, so anyway, this this whole connected, you know. So this Scientologist is promoting himself as a an AI genius, as a Facebook ninja, and yet there's no. He's saying that he's a he can deliver a master class. No, you can't deliver a master class at all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Manuel Suarez, but you don't have the academic credentials that I can find to say that you can deliver a mastermind class on AI technologies. This is Scientologist grabbing buzzwords. And, you know, there's, there's always quantum fields that, you know, those, in anything that's buzzword, they seem to latch on to. And um, so he offered that. The other claims, when you look at, when you investigate people, he's saying, uh, and this was another claim, led by award-winning digital marketeer and business strategist Manuel Suarez. But we looked at his website. What awards did he win? Who gave you awards? Where are your awards from? Those are the practical questions you have to ask 
when you're looking at these clowns online. Um, what, what, what awards did you win? Please explain. Um, this initiative reflects his commitment to contributing to the broader economy and the overall health of the business ecosystem, not just in Tampa Bay. How? Who attended? Why didn't you have any programs? And why, you know, it was May 10, 2023. It came and went and nothing happened. It looked like your AI masterclass didn't change anything. Certainly not for Riggs when we look at his stock. And then um, these are the kind of idiotic quotes. Okay. Artificial intelligence is the future of business. Well, how does he know that? He's a Facebook guru, he claims, and he's not even a good one <clears throat> based on his uh, testimonials. And those who don't, okay, so artificial intelligence is the future of business. How? And those who don't adapt will fall behind. Why? And he said, I've seen firsthand the tremendous impact that AI can have on business of all sizes and sectors. So, Manuel, you've seen firsthand the tremendous impact that AI can have on business in all sizes and sectors. That's why you have Riggs Ecclesbury, a fellow Scientologist with a penny stock that's worth 0 0.012. It's in the hundreds of a fraction of a penny. Um, that's why I have a responsibility to share my expertise. No thanks. No thanks. So that's sort of... Um, a look at you know it, it's just it's just a, an example of more uh, of the culture of um deceptiveness within scientology false promotion uh puff is a good word resume exaggeration and basically scientologists um this goes on all the time I could talk about uh, Victoria Morton and how she got a letter from the FDA many years ago. I have a file going back 20 years on, and it begins, I'll tell you a funny story and ending. The, in, in Oregon, there were Scientologists in the 1990s, and you can Google it, the blue laundry ball. These Scientologists had a blue laundry ball <clears throat> that they claim would replace detergent. <clears throat> so you could put these this blue laundry ball in when you did laundry. And you would eliminate the need for detergent, and that would help the environment. And so uh, in Oregon, the officials there checked it, and they found that the blue water ball was filled with water. And that just the mechanical agitation of the washing machine itself would wash your clothes. I mean, to a degree, wasn't like using detergent. So... Um, yeah, so you can see how, yeah, chat OT3. <laughs> you know, that's actually something you could work with. I have a, a satire on my OT, it's a great blog about how um, body thetans are actually um, are actually licensed um, telepathic, or licensed uh, devices. And I, maybe I'll do that on another show because that freaked out a lot of people when I wrote it. And... The blue water ball, blue. Yeah, the water ball, the blue laundry ball, they were fined and shut down. And then we had real water, Brent and, Brent and Amy Jones out of Nevada. They were shut down after their water was adulterated and actually killed somebody. And they had to go out of business. So there's a long, Scientology splattered with a long history of these uh, con artists or people who overrepresent or who engage in false advertising. D the late Doug Doring, who died at 66, was fined $10 million for running the, the Roach Motel, as I mentioned many times at ABC Mouse, Age of Learning. So this was just a little snapshot of what's going on, is you have, uh, you have uh, Mr. Suarez, Manuel Suarez, his testimonials are from his dead father, from a guy who's running a penny stock, basically a worthless stock over the counter, from chiropractors who are promising to cure diabetes if you buy their $97 course. They're not medically qualified. They could be in some legal trouble. And this goes on and on and on. I could literally do 20 shows on Scientology fraud and show you actual 
evidence-based evidence. Yes, evidence-based evidence, Adam. Um, so that's that's just a little glimpse into the Scientology world, and I want to show you that story. I'm going somewhere with it, but I thought I would show you something I'm, I have in development. And what does Nikki say? They would laugh him right out of the tech conferences. I used to go to that costed 1500 To attend, he is nothing. He is basically saying he has seen stuff. I've actually developed it. I've actually developed an augmented reality. Um, I attended the, uh, the UNC in California working on my bachelor's in technology. Okay, yeah. See, this is this is Scientologists. They don't value education. And uh, they do not value education. Uh, Hubbard said you should spend your money on auditing instead of a college education. And as a class, they don't value education. And this is why they use buzzwords. You know, so I'm gonna be doing some more investigation of this because I'm I'm going somewhere with it. But for a Friday, it was interesting to see how you actually have, when you dig into the reality, the testimonials and the actual people involved, there's nothing there. There's just hustlers. Hustlers are gonna be hustling. And um, there you go. So that's kind of it. Any questions we have or anything you want to share? Uh, let me see if I have uh, something here. I think it would be good marketing. Um, and this is one reason I want to stop sharing this. Uh, oh, I know what it is. I just have to get the right spelling. I'm going to share this. Here's something that I'm going to leave in, in the notes. I'll leave you with marketing. Thank you, Spaceman. <laughs> this is just too much fun, but I'll do another show on it. Or maybe I'll hire a, a Facebook ninja, a Facebook ninja to help me do it. This was something I did and I updated it later, but I did this in like 2007, a long time ago at xenu.net and top secret. This is my satire blog. So what we're going into, I, w I was thinking about like, you know, you know how these uh, uh, evangelical scientists and they, some of them are PhDs, some of them are just quacks, but they try to reverse engineer Noah's Ark. I wanted to reverse engineer BTs. So I created a company called Shadow Man Implanting Group, LLC, a division of Adeptus Transmission Services. And it, it, what I did is I called uh, BTs, I imagined them as actual electronic devices, microelectronics, and not, not spiritual body things. But I, I called them wireless airborne BT technology, Wabbit AI, intellectual property. And so I described I actually describe how I would reverse engineer and make wabbits, how I would distribute them through above ground nuclear testing in the 1950s and 1960s. And I'd have cultural cycle prompts. And to me, this was very sophisticated humor, but it was also reverse engineering. I was talking about a 56 year lifetime lithium batteries, scavenging ambient Wi-Fi. So this was, this was an interesting, uh, piece of humor I did, but it was sort of showing what a BT would really be like and how once they were dispersed on an airborne basis through above ground nuclear testing, they would cluster on people because they had some technology to do it. And this freaked out some, a few, more than a few people who wrote me wanting to know if Israel is very sophisticated humor, but it was using sort of my background in technology. And sometimes the, the, the lines blur because some of the things Scientologists talk about are based on, uh, you don't know whether to laugh or file a lawsuit or do both. This little thing I did, uh, because I like to follow technology, I um, did something else. So let me show you one more thing just entertain me. Uh, reverse engineering BT starts on OT8. 
No, I think it starts earlier. I think you'd have to have, uh, it's like a novel I want to write. I could turn this post into a novel, but reverse engineering it. Adam, that's a good question. I'm going to share this. I saw this picture recently. I like to follow tech blogs. And this is a, okay, so Xenu retires his DC-8 space plane fleet, replaces them with a sleek new Zykes de Psych space liners. I made that up. Sykes D. Psych. Now, this is an actual uh, rendering. A company's building this plane. And they're going to haul around what it's made to do on giant wind turbines uh, for wind power. The limiting factor is the ability to transport the actual blades of the wind turbine. Because when they get, you, you, when you're transporting them by ground, you're limited because you, you have to move power poles and you have to haul them at night and there's a lot of power. And if you could have an airplane to haul giant wind turbine blades, so this is a big empty plane, but it looks so cool. But I thought the DC-8 space plane was so old. And this is why creativity is a lot more fun than Scientology. Um, but sometimes you blur the lines. But if I were Xenu, the DC-8s are so old that he replaced them with these. I think this is a much better idea and I left the jet engines on because he would, uh, Xenu would need to fly around in the Earth's atmosphere. And as Hubbard conceived, the old uh, DC-8 space planes that had rocket engines, not going to work in Earth atmosphere. And I got a picture of a cool glass cockpit. I think this is from an Airbus, but look how sleek that is. See, that this is why Scientology needs to upgrade its metaphysics because if you have dc space planes it's just not going to work you're going to need something sleek like this beast which i think is so cool looking it's kind of retro and yet it's so chic that front end is really retro but it's really chic the wings are just deluxe everything aerodynamically on this is deluxe but i would put in a cockpit like this see this would attract more people but i'm getting off script but, um, you know, I just think that would be, that would be kind of fun. And uh, because it's so, uh, some of the OT levels are so dated. They need like a real sexy update. Um, Xena would use Zeppelins with M drives. You know what? The problem is you need something pretty fast because when, when you, um, when you dump, it's the problem uh, when you dump the BTs in the volcanoes and then you launch nukes well if your aircraft's not the way not away when the nuke goes off it'll be destroyed so in my original ot uh reconstruction ot7 in 2007 i had the dc-8 space planes followed by planes that launched standoff nuclear tip cruise missiles that way they were a safe distance away so how much for a flight well, if Xenu is getting you, if Lord Xenu is getting you, he'll just call you in for a tax audit and then zap you and the flight's free. You're just trapped in alcohol, alcohol glycol and the ride is free. But that's why we need Rig Ecclesbury because if, if he had on-site water purifiers, I guess he could like recycle all the alcohol, alcohol glycol for Xenu. You know, Riggs needs to take a meeting with Xenu because that might be more lucrative cleaning up remediating the alcohol glycohol, glycol mess or OT thing, or <laughs> you just write the bomb like Slim Pickens. That was such a great scene when I was a kid. That still is my favorite movie, Dr. Strangelove. I have an original pristine remastered copy. I probably watch it once or twice a year because it's such a perfect movie. Dr. Strangelove, there's no wasted scenes at all. Do you think there's any Anything interesting behind the free winds being in Barbados and St. Lucia? Uh, you know, the thing is, they, I, I don't know. I mean, it could be anything from uh, money laundering to just that the people will let them in the island because they haven't been around. So I don't know how to read that because you never know what, why the free winds is anywhere on any given particular day. So I don't know what to make of it. Maybe the Maybe the port fees are cheaper. Maybe they're discounting port fees because uh, this free winds doesn't make any money. So maybe it's just that the the fees are cheaper to 
park the old rust bucket there. So I don't know. We would have to ask maybe a Facebook ninja um, to work up a really good media campaign for the free ones to repopularize it, to make it popular again, a thing down there. So with that, you saw a little bit of what goes on with Scientologists. It's kind of a kind of a fun thing and uh, part of it's tragic, but could you imagine marketing uh, marketing a relative who unallied themselves in your business to promote it? That's That kind of made my skin crawl that you would do that to your own father. So um, they are free places to stay when Davey travels. Well, yeah, he can always stay on the boat. And uh, with that, thank you for watching, uh, spending uh, Friday evening with me. And we're going to go off air. And uh, oh, yeah, we got some good comments. I saw uh, the cow with a hole in his stomach. <laughs> Boy, that's a great comment. I saw a cow with a hole in its stomach at UC Davis every year. It was bizarre. They did that, still getting over the annual picnics. Yeah, but grew up playing Space Invaders. It's all related. Well, I, one thing I love about the audience is um, we're eclectic and we free associate. Trash 80. Yes, the TRS 80 uh, made me a lot of money in college because I sold on commission. So I love the TRS 80. And it, yes, it was called the Trash 80, but I sold a lot of them. And it really opened some doors for me. And um, yes, check them on the website. Well, so basically when you you know go to a website, if it's not current, if they're not blogging and a website's not current, that's one of the boxes I check. I have a checklist of stuff when I investigate companies for people. When I'm hired to do that professionally, I always check, is the content current? Um, what copyright dates do they have? And if a company does not have current daily content and they have six month old content, then that's one indicator I check. That's always the thing I check for. And that, and you can start doing some, and then the second thing you check for are there, are there lawsuits? Um, the Apollo demise might still my fan fave live. You have, thank you. Yeah. The Apollo getting hit by a train. <laughs> Well, let's hope that that happens to the church, except the train is called the IRS Criminal Investigation Division. And we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out of here, Commodore, Admiral, sir. Uh, thanks for watching. You're the best. Yeah.